As a Photoshop user, you're about to see some incredible advancements with Nick Collection 8. When using Photoshop, not only do you have a completely non-destructive workflow at your fingertips, but you can now seamlessly transfer masks back and forth between Photoshop and the Nick Collection. I'm going to start with a raw photo, as of course most of you would. This is a smart object, so if I open it up, it opens into Camera Raw, where I can make any changes to it. Whether you started in Lightroom Classic, Lightroom CC, or in Camera Raw, you have the option to open your already adjusted raw photo in Photoshop as a smart object, meaning you can re-edit the raw image at any time. Throughout this demo, I'll never abandon the raw source. At any time, you could go back and adjust anything at the raw level. Let's start by building a couple of masks. I'll duplicate this layer a couple times, and using Photoshop's AI tools, I'll build a couple of quick masks. I'll select the statue on the front, turn that into an alpha channel, and we'll just name that statue. And on this layer, I'll select the sky, save that as well, and name that sky. Now I'll select my base layer and jump into color effects. Because I already set my NIC preferences to include all the Photoshop masks when opening an image in the NIC collection, all the masks that I just created have gone with it. If you don't know how to do that, be sure to watch the Getting Started video where I show you how to set the preferences. If this is your first time seeing color effects, over here on the left, you have a variety of presets that you can choose from, and underneath that, all the filters that you can apply. There's a ton of them in here, and you can apply them in any order that you like. I like to start with a film look. I'm going to go with this one here called Film Effects Modern Branded. And the film stock that I'm going to choose is Kodak Gold 200. Perfect. Now this is a little bit grainy for my taste, so I'm going to back off the grain just a little bit in here. And it's a little too contrasty for this image as well. So let's zoom back out and lift the shadows up just a hair. Now I want to bring some light back into this statue. It's dark to begin with, and it's completely in shadow, so let's see if we can pull something out of it. To do that, I'm going to add levels and curves. Of course, I don't want to add levels and curves to the entire image, but just to the statue. So how am I going to do that? Well, I could use any of my NIC local adjustment tools, but remember, I've already masked this out in Photoshop. So I'll click on Import Masks, and up here, I can see my Photoshop masks for the statue in the sky. I'll go ahead and add the mask for the statue. And now, if I preview it, there's the mask. And if I make any changes, of course, it's affecting just that part of the image. So let's bring that up just a bit. We need to bring up the highlights a touch, and that'll make it stand out a little more. The Photoshop mask, though, only masked out the statue and not the ball that it's standing on. So let's add that in. I'll grab a control point, click on there. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And now if I preview the combination of masks, that's my new mask. Next, let's play with the sky. I'm going to use a filter called Midnight. When I add that, the whole thing gets really, really dark. But remember, I already have a mask for the sky. So I'll go ahead and import my Photoshop mask for the sky. And maybe back that off a little bit. Looking pretty good. I think I want to try and brighten up the statues at the top as well a little bit. I'll zoom in nice and close to one to one. Add another levels and curves and add a simple control point to this one right on the darker parts of that shadow. Raise that up, and that's looking pretty good. Once again, I can always preview that mask to see what it looks like. Maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller. I like the image I have so far, but I might be done with it, but I might not. So I want to save a version of the image as I see it back in Photoshop. To do that, I can click on this button here, Send as Layer. This is going to send a rendered layer, just as we see it here, back to Photoshop and hide it. So at any point in Photoshop, I can reveal that layer and see the work that I'd done previously. I think I'm done with color effects, but I want to take this image over to Nick 8 Analog Effects next. When I do that, all the masks that I've created and imported are going to be brought over with it. As with color effects, there's a ton of different presets here to choose from and a large collection of filters you can apply as well. There's a cool one in here called Vintage Camera that I like. I'll do a quick search to find it. There's the one that I want, number seven. Just like with color effects, I can import the masks that I made in Photoshop or even the ones that I made in color effects. Let's say I want to take this basic adjustment and mask it out. If I click on import, here we see the Photoshop masks and also the ones that I made in color effects. 
In fact, this isn't the end of the road for those masks. Let's say that I'm done here in analog effects and I'm ready to send this back to Photoshop. But those masks that I created in color effects could come in handy later, so I want to save them. Check this out. Before clicking Apply, if you click on the menu to the right of it, you'll see there's an option, Include Plugin Masks. And from here, I can choose to include either or both of the control points that were brought over from color effects. In fact, I can even choose to merge those masks to turn them into one. But I'll leave them as two separate masks. We're ready to go. I'll click Apply. And there's my new image. Here at the top, we have that hidden layer that I sent over from color effects. There's the version that I created there. And of course, this is the one from analog effects. If I look at the channels list, you'll see that the control points have been brought over as well. And of course, because everything's non-destructive, I can go back into either analog effects or color effects from here. In fact, I can even open this up in Camera Raw, make a change to the image here, say, adjust the white balance, click OK, and both analog effects and color effects will reprocess with that new raw image underneath it. As you can clearly see, using Photoshop gives you the greatest advantages when it comes to using Nick Collection 8. Not only do you have infinite flexibility with the plugins applied as smart filters that can be re-edited, but you can even go all the way back to the source raw file to edit from there. It's an impressive collection of tools.